somebody's not going to like this video, but it has to be done. Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. I'm Patrice, and if this is your first time here, please be sure to look at the other content. If you enjoy that content, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to subscribe to the channel. In addition, head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things communities there as well. For my returning subscribers and members, y'all know I love y'all. Welcome back. So, Today's video, we are going to be talking a little bit about sublimation, and we're going to be doing a sublimation hack. Now, there are several people out there who really despise the sublimation hack, so if you're one of them, this video might not be for you because I will be demoing a sublimation hack. All right, so for those of you who are into sublimation, maybe you're researching or maybe you dived right into sublimation because you saw how cool it is and how those colors look and now you're realizing that you can't sub on 100% cotton. You can't sub on 50% cotton. And honestly, the 65% cotton shirts, mm, they still don't look good. So there are hacks and those are ways around it. So if you've invested in sublimation and right now you're feeling like, oh no, I can't sublimate on the black shirt or I can't sub on to cotton shirts. There are alternatives and we call those sublimation hacks. So for today, we are going to be using some HTV from HTV Runt and this is one of their latest sublimation HTVs and it's specifically for dark fabric. Now, they have other sublimation HTVs that are for other colors, or regular colors. You can even use those other HTV, sublimation HTVs for dark colors if you use an additional piece of white HTV. But this sublimation HTV for dark colors, this should just be one step. So we don't have to have the white HTV behind it. So I'm interested in trying it out. I've done several other sublimation hack videos. A link will be listed to a few of them below that are similar to this. I've used clear sublimation vinyl or it's just really clear HTV that works well with sublimation also, but those are for more so white or light colored shirts. All right, so we are about to see how this is going to go. Let's get started. All right guys, so let's open up and see what it looks like. So if you are new to sublimation and you are trying to get into it or you just purchased your sublimation printer and you're converting it, you really do need to know that you cannot sub onto cotton directly. You cannot sub onto dark clothes or dark colors, okay? And so these are hacks. This is considered, most people will tell you that it's not sublimation. All right, guys, so here are the instructions for the sublimation HTV for dark fabrics. And it includes an information guide to help do it. There's two different versions. It says one's glossy and one's matte. And it shows you the difference between the two colors. And this one is specifically saying that it's for dark colored clothing. Based on the guide, this has like that green tint to it, green yellowish tint to it. So this one would be for glossy. This is going to be a glossy finish. All right. So as you see the back, the back is opaque. You cannot see through it. So this will provide that white layer for the dark clothes to really help lift it off of the dark colors. Okay. So this is great for 100% cotton and great for dark shirts. Okay, y'all, so now we're inside of Cricut Design Space and I already have a canvas opened. You can actually print from another design software and just cut your vinyl 
inside of Cricut Design Space or with your Cricut. But today we're going to actually be doing both inside of Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to upload the image. And we got this image from Creative Fabrica. I will have a link listed below to the Creative Fabrica website. And if you are interested in getting one of their memberships. Okay, so here's our design. And when it came in, it said that it was too large. So I'm pretty sure that we're going to have to resize it. And I'm going to select complex. It came in as a PNG without a background. So it's perfectly fine. We don't have to remove anything. And let's just click apply and continue. So since we're going to be printing from Cricut Design Space, I am just going to upload this as a print and cut. However, if you are using another software to print your design in case you want it to be larger than what Cricut can print, you can then go ahead and just select cut image as you will only be needing a contour cut of the design. So we're going to select print and cut. Okay, here's our image and we're going to click add to canvas. Okay, here's our design. And as you see, it came in pretty large. It's about 20 inches wide by 17 inches high. And it automatically set this to a print and cut because it is a PNG file. And what I need to do is just make sure the paper size that we're going to be using today is selected. And right now it says that this is at a, it's an eight and a half by 14. And so we're actually going to change that paper size to an 11 by 17. And what we need to do now, I'm just going to see what's the largest size that we could make this design. And the max size will be 11.6 inches wide by 9.93 .9 inches high. And so I am going to just click auto resize image and that way it will fit perfectly inside of our sheet for the Cricut parameters. So this is actually going to be a pretty large design as this is already over 11 inches wide, which is gonna be fine for me because I will be placing this on either a large shirt or an extra large shirt. Okay, so next we're going to make a copy because we need to have something prepared for our sublimation HTV. And I am just going to right click and select duplicate. Now that we have that duplicated, I need to turn this into the cut file. So I am going to head up to operation and we are going to change this from a print and cut to a basic cut. So now this will, this will be able to be placed directly onto our Cut once we get that done with our Cricut. Now, if you want to create an extra offset of the design and just have like a white layer around everything, you can. All you would do is select offset and then you would just select the offset that you want around your design. And I'm going to move this down because I, if I wanted an offset, I would do a very, very thin offset. Click apply. And then as you guys see, there is the black outline around the design. So if you want it to do something like that, you can. And then once you have that offset, instead of just simply duplicating the design, you would have a small offset as opposed to this one here. And we're going to delete that because I don't want an extra offset around our design. So now we're ready to make this and I'm just going to select make it and we will be using a map. Once we have everything pulled up, we just need to make sure our mats are going to cut it correctly. And so I'm going to focus on the HTV mat first. We are going to we're going to use a 12 by 24 inch mat just because it's slightly larger than the 11 and a half uh, parameters that Cricut gives you for their mats. So we're going to use a 12 by 24 inch mat and we are going to make sure that we click mirror. So that one's all set. It will be mirrored. 
and now we can focus on our print and cut and so i'm not going to mirror it here inside of Cricut design space i'm going to mirror it in the print dialog box so let's click continue and we're going to click send to printer now that we have sent to print printer open we are just going to make sure everything is okay so it is on the epson eco tank 15,000. that's what we'll be printing from i'm going to remove the bleed and we are going to open the system dialog box. Once you select that, you want to make sure that you click print. When you click print, the system dialog box is going to open. You will not see it if you have your screen enlarged. So you just want to move your screen out of the way and it will be behind there. Okay, so this is our dialog box and we're going to head down to printer options. Under printer options, I'm going to select print settings. And I'm just gonna make sure everything is correct. So the paper source is auto select. I'm using an 11 by 17 sheet of paper. So with this particular printer, it has to be fed from the rear, from the back. And I'm going to leave my media type at plain paper, bright white. Print quality, we're going to change the print quality to quality. And I'm going to select mirror image. Once we have those saved, I am then going to head to color options and we're going to expand the advanced settings menu. Under mode, I'm going to change mode to Adobe RGB and we will leave the gamma at a 2.2. Now I'm going to select OK and we are ready to print. Today we're printing from our Epson EcoTank 15000 and we are using sublimation ink. The sublimation ink we are using is dynamic ink, which is my ink. You can find a link listed below in the description. Now we're ready to cut the sublimation HTV and we need to look for the flocked iron on setting. This is the setting that they suggest. So we are going to try it out. Let's see blocked iron here it is right there and yep we have our notification or our warning to make sure we mirror our image it is mirrored so we are going to get ready to place this into the machine all right guys so i already placed this onto our mat and if you notice i left some space around here on the mat because this sheet is about a 10 by 12 and the image is pretty large and so it wouldn't fit if I don't do it like this. So I'm just taking a little bit of space off the top and the bottom. You want to make sure that the shiny side of the material is what is on your mat. And we are ready to place this in. Alright guys, so now we're going to get ready to remove it and I do notice I should have had it up just a little bit more. Part of that did not cut and as you see I still have space down here where I could have just brought it over just a little bit more. I was just being extra cautious. So let's get ready to, so let's get ready to weed it. And now I'm just removing it away from the mat. Y'all, this material weeded really easily. That setting worked perfectly with this material. I used my pin pin weeding tool and I did not have any issues with weeding this. Now it is pretty tightly onto that backing, but y'all, it was super easy. I thought that this material was thick and once I weeded, I realized that the thickness really is just the backing. It's not that thick at all. All right guys, so we're going to preheat our heat press to 305 degrees. And this is going to be for us to apply the HTV. And I'm just going to straighten it out. I don't want anything to interfere with the pressure that we need to apply. 
I'm gonna take our lint roller and just clean the shirt. As it's heating up, I'm going to give our shirt a pre-press just to remove some of the moisture out of the shirt and to knock out some of the wrinkles. So now we're ready to place our HTV onto the shirt and you wanna make sure that you have it shiny side facing you, shiny side up, and we are just going to flip it over. So you gotta place it down like this. All right, so we're going to place this here. And you just wanna make sure you have it aligned exactly where you want it to be. And for your pressure, you wanna do heavy pressure, okay? So I'm just going to increase the pressure a little bit and then we're going to press this for 10 seconds all right i kind of overdid it but you want to make sure that you cool the shirt down because it needs to be a cold peel next you want to increase the temperature of your heat press to 375 degrees all right guys so we let it cool off and so we're gonna just go ahead and remove the backing from the HTV. And it is on there pretty tight. Y'all, that was a workout. It is on there. So first things first, even though this is a sublimation hack, we do want to make sure we line our heat press with a little bit of butcher paper. We don't want any ink to get onto our heat press. And next we're going to put our shirt and that initial press of the HTV, this is very shiny. It's not matte. And we're just going to place this underneath the heat press. You want to keep your pressure heavy as recommended by the manufacturer. Here is our image. We're going to Okay, y'all, so it's your local hot mess crafter and I forgot to cut off those registration marks. So make sure that you cut off your registration marks prior to pressing your design because if you're printing on a white shirt, it will show. Fortunately, I'm printing onto a black shirt so they are not going to show, but remember to cut off those registration marks, especially when printing from Cricut Design Space. All right, back to the video. Tip, we can align this without cutting the sheet, but if you need to, you can definitely do a contour cut with your Cricut. So what I did was I turned off the light to kind of help me be able to see better. All right, so now that we're ready, I'm going to get some heat tape and tape this down. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll cut like a corner out, just cut it with scissors just to make sure it's lining up, but this actually looks like it is very, very good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and tape it and we shall see if I line this up correctly. All right, so I actually put quite a bit of heat tape down because I don't want it to move. Next, we're going to place some butcher paper on top. That is to protect our heat press. And now with it on heavy pressure, we're gonna go ahead and press it down. And again, this is going for 45 seconds and it is heated at 375 degrees. All right, let's see what we have. So we are going to remove that butcher paper and then we are going to get a peek. Oh, wow. I really could have just moved it over slightly. But y'all, look at that. Wow, that is gorgeous. And I did not even turn the lighting back on. This is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Wow. So it doesn't suggest pressing 
a second time with another, uh, like how I usually do with parchment paper when I'm doing other print methods. It says that this is good to go. Y'all, this is gorgeous. And this is with the light turned on. So it looks amazing. I do have a little bit of white here. I think I needed to just kind of slightly bring it down or maybe shift it. But for the most part, I love how that came out. That looks amazing. And here is a closer look at that shirt. Okay, y'all, so we are all done with trying out this sublimation HTV from HTV Rant that's specifically for dark color shirts. Today we used it on this black gilded 100% cotton shirt and the colors look amazing. The shirt came out really good. I really like it. At first I thought that this was going to be very thick the way that it felt, but it's really not as thick as I thought. You can feel it. Um, it is something that's sitting on top of the shirt. So this is Completely opposite of sublimation, even though we applied the sublimation technique. As with sublimation, sublimation is being embedded into the fibers of the shirt. This is just sitting on top, on top of some HTV, but it looks really, really good. Now, I like the glossy look, but I think I need to try the matte finish. I have the matte finish version in the other formula of this HTV, but not in the one specifically for dark colored shirts but y'all the colors look really good it's actually very pretty and the glossy really is glossy it's shiny now the one thing that I do want to recommend for HTV want to do is maybe selling them in 12 by 12 sheets because as you guys saw like I did have a little issue with uh, part of my design not cutting off because it is a 10 by 12 sheet of HTV. Now, I believe it comes in a roll. I do have a roll of the other formula, so it might come in a roll. I'm not 100% sure, but we can definitely check that out. And if it does, I'll have a link listed below to this product as well. If you are interested in the wash results, I have not done any washes on this material yet, uh, and I'm not sure when I will do it. So, so if you are interested in how does this wash, I do not have a wash test for this just yet. However, Crafting with Delanda has performed wash tests on several different hacks. And I will have a link listed below to her channel as well as to her latest wash test so that you can see how this will wash. But for the most part, y'all, I like it. I think it looks good. For anyone who is trying to sub onto cotton and you have sublimation printers and you really want to, then your route would be either using a whole new print method or using some of these hacks to get that done. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, make sure to head over to Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok and join the Craftable Things communities there as well. We would love to have you. But that's it for today, y'all. Thank you all so much for watching. Until next time.